Good morning everybody, David Shapiro here with another video. So today's video is about orphan drugs, or the FDA approves the first AI-generated uh, drug for rare diseases. Now it's not fully approved, it is uh, moving along to phase two clinical trials. But that being said, what is an orphan drug? Uh, so when I first heard the term, I had to look it up because I thought it was a very odd term. But basically, an orphan drug is a special class of drugs that the FDA has where it is for a rare disease or condition that affects fewer than 200,000 people in the United States. The reason that orphan drug classifications exist is because, uh, and the reason that it's called an orphan drug, is because rarer diseases often don't get the investment of uh, medical research. The reason is because uh, med, uh, drug research is very, very expensive and can take a long time. And so often what drug companies will do is that they'll prioritize uh, medicines that are going to get a lot of attention and a lot of sales. So the orphan drug classification came around as a way to incentivize companies to treat rare diseases. So uh, basically some of the incentives that you get if you pursue, if you get an orphan drug status, you get uh, tax credits for, le for research, reduced filing fees, and seven years of market exclusivity. So this market exclusivity is uh, an interesting one, and we'll talk about that in just a moment a little bit more. They'll also offer grants for clinical trials. You get accelerated review, so you basically get prioritized. Uh, again, they want to kind of smooth the path as much as possible because one thing that happens is that, uh, again, if you have a rare disease or rare condition, you might be ignored by the medical establishment. And it's not you know anything malicious. It's just that the economies don't add up. And then uh, the FDA will also um, offer some protocol assistance. So basically, uh, scientific advice and guidance. I actually used to date someone who consulted on the efficacy of those programs and um, as well as like kind of leading companies along that pathway. Okay, so let's talk about this first AI orphan drug. The company is in silico medicine. Uh, I'm not going to read the serial number of the small molecule, but the disease that they're targeting is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So that's a mouthful, IPF for short. It is a disease with no apparent cause and no cure. The prognosis for this disease is two to five years from onset, and it primarily affects adults age 50 to 70. So idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a disease that causes progressively worse scarring of the lungs. And as you can imagine, when your lungs are too scarred, you can't breathe anymore. So it's a pretty awful disease. Uh, and this is the kind of thing that, one, it doesn't affect that many people. Uh, and there are a couple of treatments out there for it already, but those are mostly for uh, um, not, not quite palliative care. They're more for about... Uh, kind of managing the disease. But again, the prognosis for this disease is not good at all. So this drug candidate uh, by uh, in silico medicine was uh, uh, detect or targeted, designed, uh, and detected entirely by their in-house AI platform called pharma.ai. Now, obviously, this is a proprietary in-house platform, so they're not going to reveal that much about it. Um, but the 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 news the press release that they that they uh, that they uh, published over this said discovered and designed using artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm I believe that this was an end to end process, uh, and if not, then there are other drug discovery processes out there. Um, over here at the right is the CEO of this company talking about um, artificial intelligence being used to discover drugs. So that's kind of the first drug. Now, what does all this mean for us? So the first thing is uh, we have wizards in laboratories doing alchemy. No, that's not what I mean. Uh, the, this is a first proof of concept. And so what I mean by that is that uh, this is kind of the first one through the door where we have AI assisting in the development and, dis and discovery of treatments for rare diseases. And so what this does is it signals to the investment community, whether it's venture capital or other financial markets, that, that investing in these kinds of companies might be less risky. And so the takeaway there is where the money goes, so do research and results, which is good for everyone. So the reason that 
that orphan drug classification needs to exist is because there are a lot of people that are underserved. Uh, this is why the orphan drug classification exists in the first place. And in many cases, there are a lot of diseases that it's like, well, you know, yes, modern medicine is amazing because there's a lot of things that you can treat, that you can cure, or that you can manage uh, and, you know, live a long, healthy life as long as you've got the right medicine to manage it. There are, however, many, many, many diseases that we just, you just have to basically live with. Uh, some of them are fatal, like the one that we just mentioned. So what this tells me is that AI is going to allow us to start serving everyone. Uh, and even if it's not necessarily a cure, even if it's just a management of, of all diseases, this will hopefully accelerate and we will end up with more medicines that will cover, uh, ideally cure, but that's not always possible, but at least manage and maintain your health uh, regardless of what condition you have. Now, the last uh, major takeaway from this is that this takes it from theoretical to practical. And so what I mean by that is if you look at this paper that came out January this year, new study uses AlphaFold and AI to accelerate design of novel drug for liver cancer. That's great in theory, but this is just something that has been hypothetically designed in a lab. It is a, it is a long jump to go from hypothetically designing something in a lab to phase two clinical trials. Uh, th there, is, there are a lot of steps. You have to dot your I's and cross your T's uh, in order to get FDA approval, in order to develop the drug and prove safety, prove e efficacy, and, and so on and so forth. And so what I mean by theoretical to practical is this is a, uh, an example of AI being used to carry this process forward into the into the point where you're within maybe not maybe not quite a, a stone's throw, but you're getting closer to the finish line in terms of having something that is clinically useful and economically feasible. All right, so some long-term takeaways from my perspective is more diseases are going to be treated uh, with the help of AI. It's it's pretty pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, another thing is that I expect that this will result in more research and more funding. So, for instance, uh, what I mean by that is that universities are going to get more grants to help advance, you know, create more AI platforms to help with drug discovery, uh, or you're going to get more funding from investors, and this is going to have a compounding return. And so the reason that I suspect that we're going to have this is because there is this possibility for, like, an AI gold rush. And what I, what, the reason that this kind of thing happens is because as technology advances, there are going to be realizations that there are unmet market segments and, or latent unmet demand. And so what this means is that like anytime that there's a new technology, take the iPhone, for example, you have this, this gold rush of like, hey, let's develop apps for the iPhone. Let's develop uh, you know, peripherals and accessories for the iPhone. And so when you have AI uh, having this like this beachhead insurgency, into a new domain, such as drug discovery or orphan drug discovery, you realize, oh, hey, there's actually a lot of potential here. And so then you get a lot of startups, you get a lot of companies trying to pivot. Now, one thing I want to say is this is not financial advice. This is not investment advice. Um, I am not a licensed a, a financial advisor, stockbroker, or anything like that. And honestly, I avoid all these kinds of investments because they're wildly speculative and uh, <laughs> many of them fail. Uh, so that's, that's kind of my personal opinion on the matter. Now, another thing is that what I hope will be the long-term uh, result of this is cheaper medicine for everyone. Because drug discovery is so expensive and it takes such a long time, if we have you know, hundreds of new companies or hundreds of new AI tools that are accelerating the drug discovery process and the drug approval process, this means that uh, this could be one of the things that really drives down healthcare. Because right now, healthcare costs twenty to thirty percent of like America's GDP, or something crazy like that. Maybe it's eighteen percent. Anyways, it's a pretty significant chunk of our GDP goes to healthcare. So like that's <laughs> that's no way to live, uh, especially when you look at the uh, there's more drugs coming down the pipeline that have to do with regeneration and rejuvenation, and so. 
what I'm hoping happens there is that rather than those therapies being really expensive, because of course you see you know news of people spending a million dollars a year trying to uh, stave off aging. Uh, you know, I even had someone message me about you know like, oh, I'm writing a book on longevity, and I'm like, are you talking about AI? And they're like, uh, well, I wasn't gonna. I was like, okay, well. <laughs> You should be. Uh, anyways, so cheaper medicine, more diseases, uh, possible gold rush for investors and startups. We'll see how it plays out. But here's my call to action for you. Uh, first of all, support open source. Even if you don't support open source directly via you know medical research tools or anything, one thing that I want to point out is that uh, companies, private companies, benefit from publicly funded research that's published by universities. And everyone in the field uh, benefits from the tools and coding examples that uh, people like you and I put out. So this is a reason that I put all of my videos out here and all, all of the code uh, under the MIT license is because I learned most of my automation career from uh, material that was generously put for free on the internet by other people. And so... You get there's there's this like synergy. You get these compounding returns that the more coding knowledge, the more scientific knowledge that's out there in the world, the better everyone is. And you don't know where it's going to play out. Another thing you can do is spread the word. Just tell your friends about the fact that AI is actually being used to discover drugs now, uh, and that this is a good thing. Uh, by spreading the word, you will help build consensus around these things, excitement, and then also you know knock on effects such as future investment and buy-in and that sort of thing. Another thing you can do is help me out. Support me on Patreon. Uh, all my content is free. All my code is free. Or, you know, simply just like, subscribe, comment, and share on this video. Every little bit helps uh, one way or the other. And then finally, the, and this is the biggest call to action, is vote accordingly. Uh, it's about balancing the public good of AI versus private interest. Because without private interest, you don't have as much incentive to do these things. But at the same time, I prefer to see AI treated as a public good, uh, which is why you know I do everything open source that I can. And one of the big things that we need to look out for is regulatory capture. We don't want um, either one company or a small number of companies dominating this space and controlling it, because while that would benefit them financially, that slows the rest of the world down by walling off access to some of the best tools and technology. So that's my call to action if you want to help make this future a reality. Thank you for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this video. Like I said, like, subscribe, comment, and share. And uh, if you want to support me in my mission, uh, head on over to Patreon. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.